Now we're going to talk about why paying your credit card off on time uh, matters. And with me is Arnold Dippenau, who's head of the Consumer Credit Card Division at uh, Standard Bank. Morning to you, Arnold. It does sound an obvious thing to do, you know, pay off what you owe on your credit card, but uh, that's not what a lot of people do. And I don't suppose everyone's aware of all the options that you have for paying off your card. Yes. Thank, thank you, David. Nice to be here. Um, I think credit card is a you know, wonderful product that customers have got you know, to do daily spending and not really to have carry any cash with them. So it's a product that you want to protect and you want to make sure that any limits that's been given to you, that you keep that intact. So it's quite interesting that we see over the holiday periods that people you know, tend to, to make uh, the payments late. Well, I was going to say, we were saying earlier all these public holidays, and I must do a bit of research and find out exactly how many we have compared to other mm -hmm. countries. It must be to near the top of the list. But I don't think too many countries have as many in a shorter space of time. And uh, Gerbrand Smith was saying earlier that some of his colleagues take leave now instead of December. Because December, you've just got Christmas and New Year and a week there. But there are lots of days which are theoretically working days. Actually, this is a time when you might spend a lot of money that you hadn't budgeted for because you're actually taking a lot of time off. And we can, <coughs> we can see that, especially December and April, mm. you know, spending goes up as people are on holiday. But I think the important thing about the, the, the card uh, repayments then is that people even forget, uh, you know, often forget on holiday. I mean, you don't think about repaying your debt while you're on holiday, you're mm. thinking about relaxing. So I think that's where people forget to pay that. But, you know, we've got various ways which you can actually help customers to to not forget and mm. effectively to protect their credit records. Before you go any further on that, I, I, I'm a bit surprised that the banks don't insist that you have a monthly arrangement which is automatic, whether it's a percentage or a certain amount or the whole amount. Uh, why leave it up to the customer to have to remember? I think there's, you know, there's probably a bit of uh, history around, specifically around the credit card product, where it wasn't always mandatory that you need to set up, for example, a debit order. So there is customers that don't have. It's also customers have flexibility as to what they want to repay. And you know, we see that most customers, there's basically three groups of customers. The customers that just pay the minimum amount that's due um, as per the agreement we've got to them. And then you've got a group of past customers that like to have a fixed repayment because they then know every month you know, what it is. And then you've got customers who want to make use of the 55-day interest-free period where they actually settle the full balance at the end of the month. Mm. Um, and there's a good mix of all these customers, but we, you know, continuously urge customers to get a, a, a debit order signed, uh, to get it set up, because it's just so much more convenient um, uh, to get the payments made. And the guys that don't have, or the customers that don't have it, you know, we we try and make it as easy as possible for them to pay through banking applications. That you know, wherever you are, you can use it. We've got yeah. cell phone reception as well as internet, uh, through internet banking to do that, and then as a last option, you know, go to the branch and pay at the branch, which is obviously not the preferred no. way Perhaps to people don't realise also if they delay the payment, that's more interest against their name. So you, if the debt's not paid, then the interest piles up. I mean, how much, give us an idea of how much it could cost you if you delay your payments regularly. You keep delaying them, then you're going to end up with more interest, surely. I think the interest rate is determined on what your outstanding balance is. So whatever your outstanding balance is and how that grows is a percentage of that. Mm. Um, <clears throat> so how much it would be is will all be dependent on... Mm. But it's going to be goes. more. Yes, because if you, if you think about it, if I buy groceries every month for my credit card or put fuel in, which is very convenient to use it, preferably you should pay all that back at the end of the month mm. because it's a monthly uh, mm. expense that you incurred. Mm. F for something which is different, for example, paying a school fees or paying um, major car you know, buying some durable goods or major car repairs. And that you could probably finance over time through your credit card. So customers really need to understand why they use the, why they using the credit card, for what purpose, and then adjust their repayments accordingly. So uh, how much, what, what's your experience of people not knowing this, not knowing these things? Uh, how much education have you got to do? I think you know education is something that we continuously do, um, you know, to to make make people aware of uh, the function of the credit card. Not there's a lot of a lot of benefits attached to it. You know, some of the travel insurance benefits you get when you buy airline tickets with mm. using a credit card, um, or the fact that uh, you know you've got all these easy easy mechanisms to to, to repay the account. So, um, and you know, we also. Where customers get into trouble, we've got a uh, customer assist unit that actually support customers, have, have a, uh, a way to restructure their mm. debt. 
um, and support them through difficult yeah, times. We see people shopping there on the screen uh, as we're speaking. Um, uh, what about your credit record? And I think perhaps that's an yes. area people don't uh, <coughs> appreciate, is if you are late with payments, then you're, you're in bad debt, uh, and it can affect your record if you're applying for other uh, loans. Yes, there's basically two implications of, of not paying your credit card debt. The first one is we will freeze the limit, available open limit that you've got. So it means you can't spend anything more on the card. Um, and then the second thing is, you know, if you cont uh, regularly go into, into um, late payments, it affects your credit record. And your credit record at the end determines, firstly, if you're going to get credit and if a financial institution would be willing to give you credit. And then secondly, uh, you know, what the cost of that credit would be, because mm. high-risk customers generally pay high interest uh, on the on mm. lending. What about the unsecured lending space? I mean, that's not where you are generally. And uh, how, how, what's your sense, I mean, of where the consumer is at the moment? Everyone says the consumer's battling. Earlier on this morning, we were talking about how a lot of the retail results that have come out have actually been quite good. Um, I think from a customer spend perspective, you know, we don't see, uh, even after the rate increase that we had, we don't see a, a major reduction in, in spend coming through. So they've our, still our got some capacity? There's, there's, there's still got some capacity. Um, I think you know there's there's so many uh, consumer or, uh, expenses of customers go up. I think you know toll fees going up, petrol price going up, mm. you know everything is going up up all the time. So people we need to continuously sit and think about their budgets and think about the debt that they've got and that they need to repay and adjust their lifestyles accordingly. Mm. Um, but people still have to buy food. They still have to put petrol in the petrol tanks to get to work. So that, that uh, expenses will continue. Looking at uh, offering credit to consumers, uh, <coughs> it's in your interest for them to pay more interest in a sense. So, uh, and I'm being cynical. So the, the bank will say, let those guys who don't want to pay every month or want to get into a little bit of debt, let them carry on because we'll then make a bit of money, we'll then remind them and they'll pay. But we make a bit more interest in the meantime. And if you've got a lot of customers doing that, you actually make quite a lot of money out of them. Yeah, I think, you know, with customers paying slowly off in debt, especially at revolving products like a credit card, mm. you, we will make more interest income. But at the end of the day, what's the thing is important for us is the financial well-being of the customer, mm. you know. We don't want our customers to, to get into trouble. Um, that's why we continuously try and educate them as to what they should uh, use the cards for and how they should use it. And, you know, as I mentioned earlier, if you buy groceries, make sure you pay it back on in, in the month. Yeah. Um, and in I think in the longer term, we will then have the benefit of a, of a, yeah. of a good customer. Which in is your experience now, I mean, people, you shouldn't be borrowing to buy groceries uh, if, unless you're paying it off at the end of the month. Yes. But so if you're borrowing and then you, you, the debt is deferred, you shouldn't be doing that, obviously. How many, uh, how many people in South Africa, how many of your customers do that? Um, you know, if I look at our total turnover that we have a month and the total repayments we get in, um, it is almost uh, more or less the same every month. So, for example, if you look at the, how much your debt book grow by, say it grows by 10 or 15 percent, mm. and the level of spend that goes through those cards and the level of repayments that come in uh, means there's a reasonable closely set off between the two, which which is an indication that people pay off more mm. than what is just the minimum that's required.